Hello everyone, this is the second part in our series of tutorial videos for the electromagnetic solver and its application for electromagnetic metal forming. In this part we are going to uh, focus a little bit more about the physics involved uh, regarding eddy currents and the consequences in terms of mesh size and time step. We are often going to refer to a simple example available on the Dyna examples website. So I suggest that you download the, impu the input deck if you haven't done so already and have it, you know, keep it close by while you're listening to this video. In the previous video, we introduced um, some of the main keywords needed to set up an EM input deck. Um, it was a conductor that was connected to a circuit. In this case, uh, an imposed voltage, and then the, this imposed voltage was generating current. One thing which was observed was that the resulting current flowing from inlet to outlet was not uniform across the surface. Rather, it seemed to decay through the thickness, with lower values at the center. In reality, what happens is that for an alternating or fast rising current, this was the configuration which we had uh, in the example, um, the current will have a tendency to diffuse through the thickness following an exponential law and associated with, to a decay rate which we call delta. For this, you know, from this, um, what you can already easily deduce is that for diffusive effects to be noticeable, the total thickness of the conductor must be bigger than the value of this decay rate. This decay rate, which is also called skin depth. So that's the first law, you know, related to eddy currents. For diffusion to happen, skin depth must be lower than thickness of conductor. Okay, first, first thing to check. Um, so next, a uh, next question would be then, oh, all right, uh, so how is the skin depth calculated? Um, well, its value is rather well approximated uh, by the following law, uh, which basically we have uh, the skin depth, which is equal to the inverse ratio uh, to the square root of pi times the frequency. So you need the frequency of a current, so that's why uh, only alternating or fast rising current, times the permeability and times the conductivity uh, of your conductor. In our case, if you do the quick maths um, for the example which we had, you will see uh, that we had a skin depth value of about 0.16 uh, and the radius of the conductor was 0.5, so there was plenty of diffusion going on. So this is why we were observing uh, what we were observing. Okay. One thing uh, which is important to note is that nowhere in the keywords must a user give anywhere the skin depth value. All right? The diffusion and the associated skin depth value is a consequence of the parameters given by the user and then the subsequent solve. However, what is important on the user's side, it's important to calculate using the, that formula an estimated value because this will give us a mesh size criteria. In order to capture this current diffusion, what is recommended is to have a mesh uh, which is fine enough. And generally, we say uh, that to we say that um, the user should put at least three elements in the first layer closest to the conductor surface. Okay, because this is where most of the diffusion will go on. Most of the of the current is concentrated uh, close to the surface. So this uh, skin depth value, uh, which has been calculated or estimated rather beforehand, will drive our choice of mesh size. Okay, and in this example, this is what you see below. You see uh, our current diffusion, and then we have uh, measured and taken some points and compared um, the results between uh, the numerical output and um, by using an estimation of the skin depth of the decay rate uh, calculated by the um, uh, formula mentioned above. Okay, you see that the results are fairly close. One uh, side point which I'd like to mention uh, since we're talking about the mesh um, quickly, um, tets and wedges are possible with the electromagnetic solver. However, it is strongly recommended uh, to use hexes whenever possible. The reason uh, it's related to the finite element base which the EM solver is using, it's called FEMSTA. Um, one of its properties it's, is that you have a very good conservation uh, of the solution within one element, provided it's a hex element. Okay, 
So very good and accurate solution, but you need hex elements. Uh, a distorted hex will always be, be better than, for example, let's say one hex and a tet. So try to have as many hexes as possible in your mesh. Finally, um, another important point, now that we have chosen our mesh size, uh, this also gives us an additional condition on the electromagnetic time step. Indeed, even though the solver is implicit, and so you know, uh, an implicit solver should basically allow any kind of time step, um, what we have seen is that for accuracy, but also for stability reasons, purposes, um, it is advised to pick an EM time step which does not stray too far away from its CFL condition. And so what's the CFL condition um, for electromagnetic eddy currents? Um, it's the formula which you see here below. Uh, the formula for the CFL condition uh, is function of uh, the mesh size L and then uh, D, the characteristic diffusion time, which uh, in turn is function of the vacuum permeability and the conductivity of the conductor. Now, if you go ahead and take another look uh, at our rod example, which we uh, saw before, uh, if you take a closer look at the mesh, you will see that it's finer, closer to the surface. And the reason being that that's done on purpose. It's in order to uh, correctly capture the diffusion of the current density through that thickness. Okay, so this is what we saw uh, before. Okay. Um, Another tool here which I'd like to introduce is the data plot object. If you right click on your solid, okay, you can create a data plot uh, object and this will allow you um, to extract data either here uh, if you do by point, you see that by default it has put my point in the middle of the conductor. Uh, if I update it will give me the value, uh, the chosen value here, the scalar potential uh, function of time for this point. But what's a little bit more interesting um, here, if you take the um, source by line uh, and define two points. So for example, I want to define uh, a line that goes uh, from the surface to uh, the middle there, to the thickness. Let's see if I can uh, do it quickly. This, this one I won't change and now where's my other point here? Okay, I go to the surface and I want 10 points there we go. If you click on update, it will give you uh, the current density, which is our chosen value here, function of distance. Okay, in this case, the y-axis. Okay, and uh, what's pretty neat is that if you animate the result, you will see that the curve will automatically refresh, uh, refresh as well. And you see here, in our curve, that the current is a lot higher now closer to the surface and decays rapidly. Okay. Another thing which I'd like to uh, quickly introduce now, something a little bit different. Uh, let's see here, if I create a section through the thickness, okay, uh, I see that among the variables which I can plot, there is also the magnetic field. Because uh, one other property of this uh, alternating or fast rising current uh, is that it will generate a magnetic field. Uh, you can see here the magnetic field in the conductor. If I display, let's see, some vectors here. You see this is the, those are the vectors of the current density going from inlet to outlet. Okay, and then here the, those are the vectors of the magnetic field, okay, turning around. Uh, so a magnetic field is being generated uh, in the conductor. But where it also becomes uh, interesting is if you right-click here, you can also create a field line field lines object uh, and again if you take source by line and define let's say two points let's say I want five magnetic field lines you see that you know this rod this conductor has generated um, a magnetic field outside in the air as well. Okay? Uh, and since this is going to be very interesting uh, in the next video where we're going to study the uh, uh, interaction between conductors. Okay? What's going on if I put another conductor uh, above this one, for example? So in summary uh, of what we have seen, there are a few things here. 
Um, the first point is that the eddy current solver will take into account the diffusion of the current through the thickness of the conductors. The diffusion can only happen in cases where you have either an alternating current or a fast rising current, okay, so no DC current. Uh, the importance of this diffusion is based uh, on a quantity, on a decay rate, which is called the skin depth. It's important to estimate the value of the skin depth in order to have a good idea or, you know, a good approximate idea of the mesh size uh, which you should use for your conductors. Okay? Uh, and in turn, the chosen mesh size will impose an approximate limit on the EM time step. So basically, just by looking at your parameters, your conductivity and the frequency uh, of your alternating current, you can estimate two important things. You can estimate the mesh size, which you are going to need, and you can also estimate roughly what your EM time step is going to be. Okay? Um, and then finally, one thing that we saw, we concluded on that, uh, is that the alt this alternating current and this um, diffusion of the current density uh, also generates a varying magnetic field both in the conductor itself and in the air around it. And this is where it becomes important because in the next part, in our next video, uh, we're going to focus on the interaction between conductors and how the EM solver handles them. Okay, So we're going to see what happens physically but also um, numerically. Thank you for watching and see you uh, for the next video.